assalamu alaikum welcome to my channel can you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any new uploads and do share this with your friends so that they also benefit today we are going to solve cambridge igcsc mathematics paper 1 core 0580 variant 12 may june 2018 question number 1 one morning marcia works from 0820 To eleven fifteen. Find how long she works for. Give your answers in hours and minutes. When you have a time question like that, you want to find the difference between the two time. You can use your calculator directly. In the calculator, write which is the bigger time, eleven. So write eleven, and then press this button, and then write fifteen. Press this button. This is your hour. This is your minute. And this is your second. So there is no second given. So you write zero and then press this button. Minus zero eight, which is the hour. Press the button. Twenty. Press the button. Put zero and press the button same way we did here, and you will get the answer directly. Two hours and fifty five minutes. I hope you understood this method. Part two, simplify. Seven g minus g plus two g. They are all g. Negative g means there is a one here, so there is negative one g. You can put in your calculator seven minus one plus two, and you will get eight g. Next, expand. So we will times seven with x and seven with negative eight. Seven multiplied by x is seven x. Seven multiplied by negative eight is negative fifty-six. Question number four: Find the value of p when five to the power of p divided by five to the power of eight is equal to five to the power of thirteen. As you can see, all the bases are the same: five, five, and five. If the, there is a divide here in uh, questions of indices or exponents. It means we will minus the power. So five to the power of p minus eight is equal to five to the power of thirteen. If it is a divide here, we minus the power. If it's a multiply, we add the powers. And as the bases are same, they get cancelled. So what are we left with? P minus eight is equal to thirteen. This eight, when we move to the other side, it'll be a positive. So thirteen plus eight, twenty-one. So p is equal to twenty-one. Question number five. We have been given a list of numbers, and we have to work out the difference between two prime numbers. So what are prime numbers? Prime numbers are those numbers that are only divisible by one and itself. They are not in any other times table. And two is the only even prime number. So from this list, the prime numbers are seventeen and forty-one. So forty-one minus seventeen is twenty-four. You can watch uh, my video related to all the different types of numbers. There I've explained in more details prime numbers and the different other numbers too. Question number six. Here is a sequence. Find the value of a and b. So we don't know what is a and we don't know what is b. Let's find out the difference between the two thirteen and nine. Thirteen minus four is nine. Nine minus six is three. Three minus eight is negative five. So every time, what do you notice? We are Increasing the number that we are minusing by two. So what this is going to be negative ten, and the other will be negative twelve. So negative fifteen minus twelve will give you negative twenty-seven. What about a? What are we going to do with that? A minus two, a minus two is equal to thirteen. The negative two we bring to the other side, so thirteen plus two, fifteen. A is fifteen. Part 
uh, question 7. The bearing of a lighthouse from a Coast Guard station is 130. Work out the bearing of the Coast Guard station from the lighthouse. No diagram or anything has been given to you. Only an angle has been given to you. It's a very easy question. If the angle is less than 180, 113 is less than 180, right? So you add 180 to it. And you will get 293. So that's your answer. And if your bearing which they have given to you is more than uh, 180, you subtract 180 from it. So just remember this trick. Less than 180, you add 180. More than 180, you subtract 180 from the angle. Question number 8. We have been given a diagram and we have to write the number of lines of symmetry. You can see that it has been divided into four equal parts. So the number of lines of symmetry is 4. And the order of rotational symmetry will be also 4. Question number 9. Write these numbers in order starting with the smallest. When you have a question like this, write down the decimal form of the numbers which are in fractions or which are in the exponential form. So this will be 0 0.04, 0 0.037. 0 0.0363 and now write from the smallest to the bigger number as you can see that this is the smallest number 0 0.0363 do not write in the decimal form write in the form which is given in the question which is 2 over 55 and the second smallest is 0 0.037 which is 1 over 27 Then we have 0 0.038 and then 0 0.04, which is 5 to the power of negative 2. Question number 10. Factorize completely. So let's write this in an expanded form. You have 4x. y square means 2y and y cube means 3y. So what do you see common? These two y's are common. We factorize the 2y. And... 4 and 6. 2 times 2 is 4 and 2 times 3 is 6. Therefore, the 2 is common. We write that out. What are we left with? 2x minus 3. Y. There's one y remaining here. So that's your answer. Question number 11. Here are some numbers written in standard form. Write the largest number and the smallest number. Use your calculator and write these numbers in ordinary form. For numbers like this, you may not get the answer in a decimal form. So remember, if it's a negative, you move your decimal to the left. So 10 to the power of negative 3, you move your decimal 3 places to your left and this is the answer you will get. So which is the largest number? As you can see, this is the largest number. So we write it 1.36 multiplied by 10 to the power of 6. And the smallest number is 5.21 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 3. Question number 12 is a vector question. Work out a plus 3b. So what is a? 5 negative 2 plus 3b. So we write 3 and we write B. We multiply 3 with negative 7, we get negative 21. 3 multiplied by negative 3, negative 9. So now we are going to add 5 plus negative 21. That will give us negative 16. And negative 2 plus minus 9. That will give us negative 11. So that's our answer. Question number 13. Make y the subject of the equation. When you're making the subject of the equation, remember the first thing that whatever you're making the subject cannot be negative. So you got your negative 2y. Let's make it positive first. 
So we move it to the other side. And if you want to make y the subject, y has to be alone. We have a 2 there. So move it to the other side. It's a 2y means 2 multiplied by y. When we move it, it's going to be a divide. So 5x plus 7 divided by 2 is our y. So the subject is always written on the left-hand side. Therefore, y is equal to 5x plus 7 divided by 2. Next question. Change 600 euros into dinars when the exchange rate is 1 euro is equal to 0 0.429 dinars. Give your answer correct to the nearest dinar. For a currency conversion question, always write the currency on the top. This is the euros and this is the dinars. 1 euro is equal to 0 0.429 dinars. Therefore, 600 euros is equal to how many dinars? We cross multiply. 1 multiplied by x is x. And 0 0.429 multiplied by 600 is 257.4. Read the question correctly. They want to the correct uh, nearest dinar. So we will not write after the decimal, we'll round it to the whole number, which is 257 dinar. Question number 15, complete these statements when W is equal to 10 W is equal to 70. So 10 W, uh, sorry, 10 W is equal to 70. Therefore, W is equal to 70 divided by 10, which is? 7. Now b is a little bit more different. You have 5x is equal to 15. So what is x equal to? 15 divided by 5 which is 3. So the value of x is 3. Therefore 12x, so 12 multiplied by 3 will give us 36. 12x is equal to 36. Question number 16. Use trigonometric to calculate the value of x. x is the angle. And I hope you are aware of the trigonometric ratios. Sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. If you have a right angle triangle, the side opposite your right angle, that is your hypotenuse. Now, opposite and adjacent can change depending on the angle. If this is the angle, what is opposite? This is opposite, right? So this angle, this side will be adjacent. Now, let's see what we have. We have been given this angle here. And this is the adjacent and the side opposite the right angle is your hypotenuse. So you have been given adjacent and hypotenuse. What does that mean? We have to find or use cos. So cos x is equal to adjacent, which is 5 centimeter, over hypotenuse, which is 8. Whenever you want to find the angle, we write inverse. So cos inverse 5 over 8. It will be 51.3 degrees. So that is the value of x. This brings us to the end of this video. For question number 17 onwards, please watch part 2. And remember to subscribe and share this video with your friends. Thank you for watching.